The Arctic is warming four times faster than the global average. And this we can see in melting glaciers, melting permafrost, a change in tree lines and in vegetation. My name is Mats Björkman. I'm working with climate change issues in the Arctic, looking at vegetation change, glacier melt and permafrost thaw. The reason for this Arctic amplification is the loss of sea ice to a large extent and also the loss of yeah, snow-covered ground. At the Latnyayare field station, where I run the long-term monitoring program, we've seen a gradual change with more shrubs and an overall taller vegetation. This might seem positive for the carbon balance, but in the long run, looking around the Arctic, we have thawing permafrost that might counteract this, releasing more carbon to the atmosphere with a warmer climate. Small research stations like this are the fundamental basis to our knowledge about climate change in the Arctic. Keeping the monitoring of glaciers, permafrost, vegetation, sea ice, you name it. What I do with the tree rings is to set the current climate conditions in some kind of long-term context. So now I'm looking at uh, dwarf birch shrubs uh, that have been collected from northernmost Sweden. And these small shrubs can contain more than 100 annual growth rings. And we are investigating if we can use this uh, to reconstruct climate for uh, northern Lapland uh, using these small shrubs. And what we can see when we, when we look at temperatures, for instance, in, in, uh, in Scandinavia going back more than a thousand years, is that the current warming is unprecedented. So we can't see anything similar, not as high temperatures for so long and not this uh, quick rate of warming. So that's an important uh, thing that uh, we can get from, from tree rings, but we also can see how the trees behave today in a changing climate. So during the 20 years, more than 20 years I've been working in the Scandinavian mountains, it's really clear that the tree line is advancing to much higher elevations. And now we find trees growing at, you know, maybe 200 meters above the uh, tree line a hundred years ago. So it's, it's really a quick process. And we also have these high shrubs that start to, to climb up uh, mountain slopes. So it, this is something that we can also measure in the tree rings. So we can both see it visually and also the trees will tell us this information. And it's really useful because since there are trees almost everywhere, we can look at this in a spatial way, not only at one site, but we can compare data from many, many sites that have been sampled by us and our colleagues. For our understanding of why and how the climate is changing, climate models are crucial. At Beck, the researchers are continuously working on improving these models. Uh, my name is Chalisha. I'm a PhD student at the INAS Ubuntu University and I work with the, the data assimilation to optimize the climate models. Methane is the second most important greenhouse gas after CO2, um, and it has a more uh, radiative warming potential compared to the CO2. We have a model, it's called um, LPG gears. It's a global vegetation model. It can simulate the, the global vegetation dynamics and, and, and the methane. I mean, technically it can uh, simulate a lot of things, uh, but I'm actually concentrating on um, uh, the deadline methane simulation from the model. Once I can optimize uh, this part of the LPG case, that would contribute to the big earth system model to estimate the global uh, total budget of methane. Uh, that would definitely help to improve uh, our understanding of climate change happening because of the methane. There is no perfect model in the world. All you can do is that just make your approximation and try to compare that with the real world uh, observations and try to reduce the error maximum.